Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to make a flat sided shad crankbait and we're going to use this piece of camphor that I just cut. Check out that grain, kind of pretty. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Franco. I'm a professional engineer, a lure maker, lure designer, and an avid fisherman. And I make these videos so I can in interject a little bit of physics and engineering into the art of lure making. And if you're a lure maker, I'm going to be covering a little bit extra on calculating how much weight to put in your lure especially if you're gonna do something a little different like using a dime for a bib. This is gonna be a very different way of designing a lure. First, I wanna establish a basic shad shape. It'll be a crankbait with your typical tie-on eye and hook hanger eyes. But the key element early here is gonna be knowing how much the hardware that's gonna go in the lure is gonna weigh. So I need to make these hook hangers so I can weigh them with the rest of the hardware. And I find this twist method to be the quickest and easiest to do. Now we can weigh it all together. The hooks, the split rings, and even the dime. And we'll use this weight a little later. All right, we have our general shape, but this is sort of a backwards design. I'm trying to design a lure around the weight that I already have. So the idea is that I wanna make the smallest lure I can make and still be able to put that hardware in it and on it and use that dime as a bib. So I know the density of the camphor is 0.36 grams per milliliter. The hardware weight is 4.25 grams. And I'm gonna add a gram for the finish the paint, any foil I put on it, and the clear coat. How I'm actually gonna control the size of the lure is by calculating the theoretical volume that lure has to be. So what I've done here is I know that water is one gram per milliliter. So if I subtract the density of my wood, 0.36, I end up with 0.64. That's my excess buoyancy. That's the amount of the volume of the wood that's actually acting against any weight I put on it. Now, if I take that excess buoyancy and I divide it into the total weight that I'm trying to float, which is 5.25, I end up with 8.2 milliliters. And that should be the volume of the lure that will be just right to suspend the amount of weight of the hardware and the body of the lure. And obviously I want to go a little above that. I don't want it to sink. I want it to float, but just slightly. So I'm going to use 8.5 as the volume of my lure. And I've written it in centimeters cubed, but remember milliliters and centimeters cubed are equivalent. Now this little block of wood is approximately a centimeter thick. All right, so I've drawn a rectangle around the body, and I know since this is gonna be the general shape of the body, that this next step should be transferable, more or less. And what I'm doing is just eyeballing the areas that are not lure, and estimating what percentage of the rectangle is not lure. And I'm gonna guesstimate that it's about 40%. Now, if you wanna be really thorough in this, you could model these corners as just pure triangles, measure them out, and do an actual calculation for the area. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and see how close I came. All right, so here's my calculations. My calculated areas for the little triangles is 39, and the full rectangle is 135. So the percentage is 30%, less than the 40 I had estimated. Go ahead and call it 30%. All right, so now you're wondering what in the world do you do with that? Well, at this point, I'm looking for a way to estimate how big of a piece of wood I need to actually shape this out of and not have a lure so big that I would have to add weight to it and not a lure so small that it would sink. So what I'm gonna do next is decide that I want my lure one inch high. That sets that variable. Now all I have to do is decide how long the lure has to be. So now I'm gonna need the estimated weight of the lure after it's shaped and sanded. And we know the minimum is 8.5, but I'm gonna to go to nine because I want a little bit of leeway for sanding and I don't want this thing to sink. So if my desired volume is nine cubic centimeters, I can just multiply that times the density of the wood and I get 3.24 grams. And knowing that that's approximately 70% of the full block, if I divide that by 0.7, I get the full weight of the block, 4.6. So now after I cut this down to one inch, I can weigh it and I can figure out how much more to cut off. So I end up with 4.6. Now this is the backwards way of designing a lure. I've designed a lure around the internal weights. Now I cut the block down to one inch and since its thickness is set at one centimeter, 
I can now just weigh it and then divide the length by the weight and then calculate how long it has to be to weigh 4.6 grams. And I put a piece of tape on there that exact length. And now I can just simply draw in the shape and set up the details so I can go ahead and refine it and shape it completely. But first, let's free it from the block of wood. Got her shaped and now we're ready for the first critical weight because I need to make sure that this little block which is really rough is more than 3.24 grams because 3.24 grams is the minimum weight for the final shape of this lure so let's weigh it 4.29 4 4.3 all right that gives us plenty to work with I can trim down the thickness at the two ends and round off the edges and that'll just get us a pretty nice little lure Trying to get a nice, clean, organic looking shape without removing too much material because I'm a little worried that we're going to end up with a lure that's just a little too light. Alright, I've got it shaped. And I got a feeling I can't take off too much more, so let me go ahead and weigh it. And remember, we need to be right at 3.24 or a little higher. And uh, we got... Uh, 3.34 all right well we got one tenth of a gram to be able to sand off and that's it not a whole lot left and I, I think I got a little bit carried away taking off material but that's okay I think I can sand it nice and round and smooth and still have a little bit of safety factor I did build in a little safety factor in in the calculation so let's keep going Now I'm using this little hand drill to get the tie on eye hole started but I'm also trying to mark the dime so I can cut a little groove to allow for that twist eye to go through without hindering the installation of the bib. And a cutting disc on the Dremel tool makes quick work of it. Now it's time to install the twist eyes. I'll pull them back out and give each one a drop of crazy glue before they're finally set. Now I'll test fit the dime in the slot and make sure the twist eye goes in completely. I think the grain on this wood is so interesting. Well, I've taken all the material I'm gonna take off of it. I've installed the hardware. The lip will get installed after we get whatever paint we're gonna put on it. And we won't know how well it floats, if it floats at all, until the very end. And if it's just slowly sinking, eh, it's not the end of the world. But first, I'm gonna give it its first very thin clear coat, sand it back, and then we'll be ready to paint. All right, I just got it out of the chamber. 
and it's got its first really thin clear coat and that's just to create a smoother surface for the paint. It also gives me an opportunity to check my theory and see if this thing still floats. I'm hanging the hooks temporarily off of it and I'm going to take the dime and wedge it in the slot. And I'll just set it gently in the water here. Perfect. All right, we can move on. Check out that wood grain. It almost looks like backwards flames. I think I'm going to leave that exposed. What I'm going to do is leave the wood grain just below the eye and lip. And above there, I'll do a shad pattern. Maybe some sort of marine blue and yellow. Either a darker blue or a black on top. We'll see. Now it's time to give it a nice clear coat and we'll take it down to the lake and see what happens. All right, it's been about 45 minutes and I'm anxious to get out in the water before a thunderstorm comes. That looks really different. Really a very unique looking lure. And that wood grain is just phenomenal. Look at that. It's just so weird. It's beautiful out, but the moment I get down on there on the dock, I'm sure we'll start getting thunderstorms. But let's move. All right, we're down here. It's a little bit breezy, but hopefully the sound won't be too bad. Let's go ahead and pop it into water and see what it looks like. Oh, it's got some really nice, really nice action. All right, I think this thing is worthy of some underwater shots.
this thing really has tremendous action. I really, really like the way it came out, both uh, aesthetically, castability, and the way it cranks back is, is really nice. Bounces off of structure real nice. I had been thinking about having the bib be the major weight on a crankbait for a long time because I just think that it brings the weight nearer the center of rotation. All right, I'm gonna do some fishing with this. If you like these kind of videos, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next Friday. What kind of three is that?